Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Scorpio Season. I'm your host, Lisa, and I'm here with my co-host, Venkat. Hey, Venkat, how's it going? Hey, Lisa. Are you ready for the holidays? I'm so ready for the holidays. (laughs) Um, Though we're going to be airing this in January, so people listening will have already been past the holidays, right? Um, Yeah, so we're going to have to talk through the run-up to the holidays and the beginning of the new year. So... Yeah, so our our topic today is I for initial conditions, right? Initial conditions, yeah. yeah. So Um, so resolutions to set them up and that starts off the new year in uh, hopefully a solid way or some whatever your ritual is. So what what is your ritual? What's your initializing ritual? Yeah, so I feel like we talked about this last episode for at the end of H, but um, I think my my typical ritual is I do it every other year. There's like a worksheet that I download from something yes. called Get Bullish and I fill it out and it's got basically like, what do you want to happen this year? Um, what happened last year? What are your goals, hopes and dreams? What are you going to do? What's the concrete action you're going to take to make them happen? So it is a little bit of like goal setting, but I like doing it every two years because I think that gives you kind of enough time to have forgotten what you thought you were going to do two years ago and check back in. So is this one of the years you're doing it or one of the off years? I don't know. I'd have to go look it up. (laughs) You don't remember, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't have a ritual per se. Like people talk about resolutions and at some points I would jokingly sort of throw one out, but I've never actually seriously done resolutions. Mm -hmm. But what I do like to do is sort of um, not so much a formal review, but almost take stock a little bit and look back. But mainly the reason I suggested I for initial conditions is I, I, I think the sort of end of year is a time when you kind of have this urge to clear the decks and give yourself a fresh new start, whatever that means, right? And uh, I think I'm kind of in a little bit of a down mood right now because I'm realizing looking back <clears throat> that it gets harder and harder to wipe the slate clean and give yourself a fresh year, a fresh start every year. Like every year, there's like one year more baggage there and it's a little harder to clear away, right? <laughs> I mean, so what do you mean by clearing it away? Is it like, so I've got, I've got a couple of projects that I'm working on that I'm not going to be able to like reset on because I'm, I'm carrying them forward into the next year because they're not done yet. Well, it won't be done by the time this air. Yeah, I mean, um, most projects so are like, done, right? You kind of like stabilize them at sort of like a in- psychologically satisfying milestone and sort of uh, at least restart them, right? Like even ongoing projects. No. No? You, are we you supposed, do... Is that how you're supposed to do yeah, it? No, I mean, uh, like I'm trying to write a book, right? And uh, mm-hmm. one of my, uh, I'm sure when I like sit down to do a little bit of brainstorming, one of the things I'll note down is that I'm three chapters in and... Uh, sort of look forward to it. What's it going to take to finish the damn book? And you're trying to write a book as well. And um, at some, even if you don't explicitly think about it, somewhere in the back of your mind, you kind of like take stock, right? Of uh, the state of play of the book. No, not really. I have no, like, I have, a, I have a piece of paper floating around somewhere <laughs> with like what to look at. Like I have a to-do list somewhere, but I don't have it like loaded up in my brain. Um, I know where I left off last. And so when I go okay. and look at it, I like, kind of just start from there but I feel like if I had the whole thing in my head and like kind of had this like if I if I feel like I if I knew what I needed to be doing I would be less inclined to do it so I sort of like hide it from myself because it's just like no I've just got this one more I'd like I have this like one thing I'm working on and it's small and I can do it that's smart I I think I heard a couple of things there one is sort of hiding the own project's own um, sort of um, state from yourself so there's at least an element of suspense and surprise so you have like something interesting to work forward to but also there's this sort of sense of lateral hiding where you don't let the state of one project kind of like leak into other projects Mm. so uh, you kind of don't have like this overwhelming sense of I have 50 projects going on right Uh, yeah I think that's true it's it's pretty encapsulated yeah yeah I think I've gotten that way more. Like I think when I was younger, I used to have like, I guess, big picture anxiety. So I like at least occasionally to like make big lists of everything going on. And now I tend to, it's sort of like broken down over the years. Like, like 
20 years ago, it would be one giant list. Well, there wouldn't be much on it, but like one global list of everything I was trying to do. Then over the years, it kind of got compartmentalized. Now I have like sub lists of like, all right, I have like these half a dozen consulting clients I'm working with. I have these four or five writing projects. So like writing and consulting are two separate buckets. And if I try to look at them at the same time, it's a little bit overwhelming. So I tend to like compartmentalize. Now it's fragmenting even more <laughs> to, to the extent that it's like, yeah, each project has its own context thread. But yeah, in terms of like end of the year um, rituals for reset, I guess uh, part of the reason I think that way is my commitment to all projects at any given time is always suspect. So I'm never like 100% committed to anything absolutely. So, and the end of the year kind of forces me to like re-question my commitment as in like, I have to mm -hmm. ask myself, do I really intend to finish this book and lie to myself again for another year? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's real. I mean, what is it? I think like Visa, uh, I forget his last name. I think he's Visa Khan on Twitter. I've been off Twitter for like a couple weeks now. And mm -hmm. I feel like my memory of who's who on Twitter is like kind of like fading out. But I hopped back on today for like a quick thing. And I feel like I saw him saying that like it's jubilee. It's like a jubilee for in inbox jubilee. It's all those messages you never responded to. It's fine. Like you need to start over. It sounds like you do the same thing, but for projects at the beginning of the year, kind of go through and well, decide what that's actually a great connection and it's kind of interesting because uh, I and JJ for Jubilee so we should actually after this conversation when since we'll be recording our next session in early January we'll have had a month to think about it and then we can ask each other did you do any Jubilees right so yeah. let's put a pin in that J for Jubilees but uh, no I think I'm saying something uh, I guess much more cowardly as in I look at my apparent commitments and sort of question mm -hmm. them, but I usually don't have the guts to pull the plug on anything or, you know, declare bankruptcy because uh, a jubilee is kind of like absolving yourself of uh, a debt of some sort. And I don't think I've ever had the guts to actually do that as in like, um, you know, just say, fuck it, I'm not going to do inbox zero. I'm just going to like do select all and delete all. Like I would never have the guts to do that kind of thing. Well, uh, I would have like partial guts, like since Gmail started doing its three tabs of like, uh, what is it? Personal, social uh, oh, yeah. emotions, right? Yeah. These days I've gotten sort of a more aggressive about some days I'm like, I'm sick of looking at like all the newsletters that are like flooding into the promotions or like, you know, emailers from advertisers. So I select all boom. And if by accident, something important got classified there, there like, you know, a government email about a tax form I'm supposed to fill out. They usually send you letters, usually, right? Well, I have tax exposure in India as well. So actually I, uh, I have like an e-filing thing and I almost did that this year. That's why that's on top of my mind where like an email comes from an official Indian government tax account thing and it looks mm -hmm. like junk and uh, sometimes it gets misclassified and could get tossed. I've had that kind of thing happen occasionally. But yeah, Inbox Zero and Jubilee are kind of like... Uh, good metaphors because yeah, that's one aggressive way to do a clean slate, which is not actually process your baggage, but for like a week or two, pretend your baggage doesn't exist by just like, you know, wiping everything clean. And then of course, some of it is going to come back and bite you in the ass, right? Yeah, but this is like, if you go back to our initial uh, theme of the day, like initial starting conditions, right? Like that's kind of a decision you're making about what you want your initial conditions for 2021 to be. Yeah. And it's like, and to some extent, like that whole, the consequences, you know, what happens in 2021 is to some extent going to be consequential of how you decide to start the year. Um, yeah. And if you decide to like wipe out your email inbox, but for whatever reason you delete something you shouldn't have, yeah, that probably will come back to bite you in 2021. Yeah. But like, you know, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to know what the outcome is going to be when you're doing the thing. Yeah. And I think the more, the older you get to some extent, the more powerful you get because like, you know, you're, if you're in a job, you generally have like senior positions or something and you can be a bit more of an asshole about it. As in, like, if you're the CEO, you can just say, I'm overwhelmed. I'm deleting my inbox. If anybody has something urgent, email me again. And I've seen like, um, not just, um, I've never seen it on a private corporate email, but I've seen people tweeting that 
like big powerful VCs or CEOs or something saying, I'm declaring email bankruptcy. If you want, if, if you re emailed me recently, connect with me again. So if you're CEO or something, you can do that. But if yeah. you're like a low level flunky and you try to do that, you'll probably get fired or something. So well, but, bad uh, things might happen. It's undetermined, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, and like we were talking about garments, right? If you just decide that you're going to delete all the bills due kind of emails, not just garments, so all the commercial services, things you have to pay bills for, you can do that. But then, yeah, you'll get reminders, late payments. And at some point, the, uh, what's it called? Co collectors will start calling you, right? So it's like, yeah. The thing about owing people money is they tend to not let you forget. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like it's like, the, I, like that wouldn't be the thing that I would be worried about. I'm not sure what I would be worried about. I'm very weird with my email. I tend to read almost every email I get, um, which I think says a lot about the volume of email that I get. And a lot of that is because I spent like 50 hours one Thanksgiving going through and unsubscribing from every single marketer that sent me an email. So, um, so most of your email is personal? Hmm? I'm sorry. Is most of your email personal? Yeah. Uh, I don't get okay. too much business email yeah. at all. I think uh, my ratio, my pie chart would probably be 30% junk, another 30% like newsletters and sort of promotional you should have actually subscribed to. And the last 30% would be uh, a, a mix of both uh, personal and things I have to reply, respond to, like, you know, payment reminders or something like that. So, uh, but you said something interesting there, which is bills and people you owe money to, there's a certain security there because they have an incentive to come after you. But I think that's not the whole story because you have an incentive not to get nasty grams, right? Because I don't know about how thick skinned and resilient you are. I'm pretty like uh, uh, an ugly email can ruin my day or at least my morning. So I, I don't like things like getting reminders for late payments or mm -hmm. getting dinged with like even a small late payment fee or something like even if the money is not much just it sort of upsets me if a bank if something sends me and i'm like fuck i have to like do 30 bucks um or over, overdue fee or something uh but but we, we've talked a lot about like initial conditions as in the initial conditions that you're setting to zero right like clean slate stuff like pretending your baggage doesn't exist and you're like a fresh newborn so uh, that's one bucket of initial conditions I, i'm trying mm -hmm. to think like uh, when I was growing up, uh, before there was like email and all the digital tools, people really made a ritual out of buying their new diary and um, starting it, right? Like the paper journal or diary with like dates. And uh, my dad would get diaries from work and he would like start a new one and he would be kind of like, it would be an exciting thing for him. And it's like that ritual has gone away. I actually, mm -hmm. so it's funny you mentioned this because I actually bought a paper calendar for next year. I wanted one for this year. I wanted to start like in mm -hmm. September of this year, but for, wasn't able to find one for 2020 in September because they don't sell them anymore. They like clear the shelves out and only put like 2021s in. So I have a day to day calendar for 2021 that I've already bought and I'm ready to use. I don't, I had like very specific ideas about what I wanted to put on it. What when kind is it? it? Is it the uh, kind you tear off a day at a time? No. no, it's just like a big, it's like a desk calendar, basically. That's big enough you could write in the squares, but the, like it's okay. all one page per month, basically. So it ah. is a calendar, like a yearly calendar, but it's like writable. Um, I really wish I could remember why I wanted it, though. Um, that would be nice. Uh, yep. <laughs> it's... Uh the only kind of calendar I've ever been attracted to, apart from like, if I just need like a uh, temporary one for like tracking an activity, I just print it off uh, like, you know, a calendar template and then just have it on my wall for while I need it. So it's like, uh, when I need it, I have a, like a month long calendar with like X's on it or something. But the only kind of calendar I've ever really liked is the tear off kind where there's like a joke or proverb or something on each one, right? Because it like gives you a little bit of a boost at the beginning of the day. Uh, but yeah, I haven't bought one of those in like, or I've never actually bought one of those. I was gifted like uh, a far side one, like 15, 20 years ago. So I had that those for a big. while. Yeah. Far those side is really big. good for that. Yeah. Yeah. Those are really big ones, man. Yeah. I feel like I had one at one point, but I don't have good emotions associated with it for reasons <laughs> I don't understand. I think I would get behind or I just like, didn't like pulling. I don't know. It was never as exciting as I thought it was going to be like, 
something about like pulling one off for every day which is not that great i don't like it yeah really. and if you forget then you have to pull off like a whole week at a time i think that part of it's like logistically annoying uh, yeah but yeah what kinds of initial conditions do you have that are not zeros so things that are like you know momentum or hit the ground running type of like uh, initial conditions do you have any of those i don't think so i mean there's definitely stuff that i feel like i put into place for this year that will probably be nice going into 2021 but like i think 2021 is going to be kind of interesting because i do think it might has a good possibility to be the year we get out of quarantine yep. um for things to like kind of go back to whatever we think of as normal was normal like going to bars and mm-hmm. like concerts being a possibility again maybe possibly i guess we can we'll see what happens um was that but, a big part of your life so before like, huh was that a big part of your life before concerts and um, bars and stuff no my life okay. has not changed that much honestly my um, neither yeah coffee shops was the only thing i miss but other than that it's like yeah hmm. i mean I, i think conferences i haven't been to a conference i haven't traveled to go see friends in a long time i haven't traveled in a while so i i used to travel a lot but i really don't miss it um I miss seeing people but I like I miss going to, I miss seeing people and having good conversations but I don't miss the whole traveling aspect I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, that that's so in a way the this year the initial conditions of the new year are being overshadowed by like two other initial conditions. One is whenever quarantine is lifted and like there's enough mm-hmm. whatever uh, vaccines and stuff that we feel like we can go back to normal and the other is of course the um, Trump to Biden transition and uh, oh, yeah. whenever yeah the since we're recording this on what December 14th we've got the electoral college vote going on and it's so annoying to think that that's actually news like in the last five or six elections I've lived through this was not a day that made the news it's like all right just a routine thing that just happened anyway uh, so that's another initial condition so fresh new start for I will say that after the election I feel like I've heard less about politics in general in my feed and what's going on and I I generally would say that that's a good thing personally. Yeah. Um well for a while I, I mean it's, yeah. yeah. Me too. I've I've heard less and I think a lot of people like previously they felt they couldn't afford to ignore Trump and now it's like you realize uh, he's fundamentally a boring guy and there's no good reason to pay attention to him if he's not like in charge of the nuclear trigger or something right well so he's still in charge of the nuclear trigger to be fair he's got another month or something so yeah have a month to avoid uh, weird shit but but yeah that's um, less politics in the feed yeah but i have sort of a footnote uh, on top of that because uh, the biden administration is going to be such a throwback to like you know 2015 or whenever that that means like nothing has really been addressed it's all shoved under the carpet and so it's it's going to come back to bite us but uh, i think we can we we've earned a vacation from politics the problems will still be there but um, we can afford to like take six months off and ignore it for a while hopefully yeah hopefully i guess we'll find out yeah the georgia we senate and the elections are going to be hard to ignore. Mm, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm but... planning on ignoring it because I don't live <laughs> in Georgia. Um uh yeah, but it's control of the Senate so even if you don't live in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't live in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I will Thank try to adopt your email because I'm like on all the democratic like master email lists so even though I keep unsubscribing from all the little campaigns like they keep just adding me to they just create a new <laughs> list and adding me to new lists and i don't know how to get off the master sheet i don't think you can i've decided it's not possible um but uh yeah and it's like i don't really i don't care i don't care what's <laughs> happening in georgia i think georgian should care about what's happening in georgia but i also think this is like somewhat of a um this is very texan flavor of politics if that makes sense like but you you're not really texan you're like a repatriated texan like you spent enough time outside that i don't know you don't really strike me as typically texan but yeah apart from that i think uh, senate control is going to be an interesting thing whichever way it turns out like 
um, if the Republicans maintain control versus the Democrats gain control. It'll be interesting either way. But yeah, it's, it, I, yeah you're right, it's ignorable. Like either way, it's still going to be somewhat normal politics. It won't be like weird politics. Hopefully, uh, but I think I don't think anyone pulls off weird politics as well as Trump does. I haven't seen it at any rate. <laughs> Um, uh, all right, so yeah. I have a third bucket of initial conditions. So we've got, mm -hmm. okay, bucket one is things you try to reset to zero to kind of give yourself a fresh start, whether or not it's fake. Bucket two is things that you might try to like have um, a non-zero kind of like um, initial conditions. Like, you know, I might uh, try to hit the ground running with a new project as in like, take stock and make sure that day one when I start, maybe maybe my book is one of those projects where it's like, I wanna like uh, make enough notes for chapter four so that on like, you know, January 1st, I can sort of, uh, because it will be a holiday, I can spend a day writing chapter four. So that kind of thing. Bucket three is, I think for me personally, it's been the growing one for the last 20, 30 years. It's the chaos that you've kind of given up trying to get under control. So it's like, you know, a pile of rolling crap that's like, you can't do anything about it and it just rolls into the new year mm. so i've got a lot like that your sticky is like a sticky ball almost like your gumball of like snowball gumball of things that's just kind of rolling along behind you yeah did you ever did you ever watch that south park episode that's inspired by the akira episode of like cartman becomes a big ball absorbing everything okay so the premise of that episode is it's like you know no, Terminator, it's a Terminator parody. So the Terminator comes back and he has to like kill um, Eric Cartman because Eric Cartman has a, a trapper keeper, a Dawson's Creek, Creek trapper keeper. That's like weird and cute. But in that's the future- That's a three-ring notebook, right? Or three-ring hmm? binder, right? Trapper keepers yeah, are three-ring that, binders. Yeah, the binder kind of thing. Okay, uh, yeah. But it's specifically called a Dawson's Creek uh, trapper keeper, keeper mm. and it's from whenever that show was on. But if in the future that Trapper Keeper takes over the world by absorbing all the world's like infrastructure and computers, mm -hmm. and therefore the future guy has come back to like destroy Eric Cartman's Trapper Keeper. Uh, the long story short, he doesn't succeed, but uh, the Trapper Keeper absorbs everything and there's this huge rolling mass of crap that's rolling down the street. And apparently that's a reference to the anime movie Akira, which I haven't watched, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I would say a part of my life feels like that. It like rolls from year to year, growing and accumulating crap. Uh, I don't even feel like calling it baggage because baggage is something you have a sense of and you can kind of you map. You like carry that, it. It's like yeah. with you. Yeah. And you have a sense of what it is, right? Like you might have like baggage about, all right, I have this old high school friend I still hate, you know? So there's like a, that, a label on it. It's a labeled piece of crap. But there's a third category that's just like, you know, my computer desktop is one. Like at some point I just gave up trying to get on top of it too much. Like occasionally I'll clean it up a little bit, but now it's like, screw it. <laughs> it just rolls into the new year, like a pile of chaos in my life. And I've, I think my success has been not letting it bother me too much. Yeah. Do you have a chaos bucket of initial conditions? No. No. But I also procrastinate on all my other projects because I am keeping up with the snowball, so to speak. Um, <laughs> like, like, I mean, I think it's like kind of what I was talking about, about how like, yeah, I've unsubscribed to all the newsletters that were annoying me. Like, I don't get newsletters. Like, I don't get newsletter junk in my, in my email inbox. Except from um, the Democratic Party. Except for the Democrat, damn Democratic <laughs> Party. I can't figure out how to make them go away. Um, Register as Republican. <laughs> You can't register. We don't register for parties in Texas. Oh, you don't? Oh, okay. No. I did not know that. Huh. You can vote yes. in any primary you want. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Oh. You can only vote in one, though. That's the rule. So it's kind of like informal registration. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, uh, um, I do have a little bit of show and tell. I bought this uh, Whoop. It's a... Uh, fitness tracker and sleep tracker. So I just started uh, logging my sleep and my sleep quality last night was crap. That's why I'm a little bit of a zombie. Mm. So, it, it, so that's part of my initial condition setting for the new year. So I just went to the doctor for my physical. The news wasn't that great. I'm middle aging very gracelessly. So uh, fitness Is tracker that to snowball help me. That you're, snowball that's coming for you, Venkat? 
No, this is baggage. This is not snowball because it has a label on it called personal health going to crap, right? And that's like a label snowball going to hell. But yeah, next year I have to, oh yeah, that's one of those things where uh, I guess it's, uh, I try to reset it on a better initial condition as in not zero, but try and like at least start the new year with like a um, little bit extra physical activity. And then of course by February, that's um, history. Maybe in LA that's okay to do. I like, winter is a miserable time to start exercising because it's so cold out. LA, I think it's actually the best time because I've been uh, like uh, doing some running and stuff for the last few weeks because it's cool. There's no pollution anymore, no wildfires. So yeah, it's actually, this is the best time to get in shape because once it starts getting hot, if we're still in quarantine, that'll be a mess. So yeah. Hopefully you won't be though. Hopefully you guys will get the vaccine and we'll get to our initial starting conditions for 2021, at least the first half of the year will be uh, the great vaccine reset. Um, I think that's gonna be second half of the year. Like the next three, four months are gonna be awful. We'll go over half a million deaths. Um, and like, I think when the general population sees everybody like you know frontline workers and stuff getting the vaccine, it'll only really start in summer that's when like the general population will start getting it. And I'm betting this would be an interesting thing to bet on. I think at least a quarter of the US is going to like um, refuse to take the vaccine. A quarter, 25%? Minimum. So I think I'm being conservative. It could be as I have like 50, 60%. I don't know. At least initially. I think it'd be closer to like actually refusing. I think it'd be closer to like five or 10. I guess the time frame matters like a lot of people are going to say no if you ask them the next month. But if you say, will you be willing to take it um, like, you know, by fall 2021, most will say yes. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I myself, I'm a little reluctant to be in the first round of um, guinea pigs. So I, I think I'd be fine taking the vaccine like, you know, February, March after the full trials are up. Well, you're also in the like, I mean, me too. I'm like a work from homer who's not an essential anything and in like yeah. a fairly healthy adult. Like I am not on any, at my position in the, the hypothetical line to get the vaccine is quite at the back, so. Yeah, there's a weird thing about that, right? Because on the one hand, there's an incentive to be like early in the line, that way you get protected sooner. But on the other hand, there's an incentive to be as late as possible. So it's as like validated and all the side effects have been worked out, right? Yeah. So like uh, there was some coverage in the LA Times a couple of weeks back about the black community in LA in particular, because they're ambivalent because they've been um, disproportionately hit, right? So that's one reason for like more black neighborhoods to get vaccinated first. On the other hand, they have like bad historical memories of being targeted for all kinds of like weird medical experimentation and shit. So there's like this ambivalence of uh, uh, we want the vaccine and we don't want the vaccine. Like we want somebody else to try it first. So I think that's totally understandable. And I think a lot of us, everybody has like some version of that. Like um, you wanna be first and you wanna be last at the same time, which means most of us will end up in the middle. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, if someone was like, Lisa, you know, your time has come and it was in the next two weeks, we'd be like, sure, shoot me. Like, let's do it. Let's like, I'll take it. Great. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, probably won't happen. But if yeah, did, I think, uh, well, the US doesn't work that way, right? Like it'll be uh, at some point, it'll be like, now it's available to the general population and therefore you'll have to sign up. So, you need, and then it'll be actually up to you to decide when to actually go sign up. So would you sign up on the first dates made available to general population or would you sign up like weeks or months later? Because this I'd is not China. I'd put my name on the list as soon as the list was available. Yeah. Oh, okay. All I right. Mean, so you're um, up front. Yeah, I'd sure, probably wait not? a bit. I'd probably wait at least a month or two. Yeah, I'm being honest. And it's like, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but on the other hand, I do, uh, if others are like figuring out the side effects, I I'd rather wait to see more. And you're waiting out of an abundance of caution in terms of oh, like self-impact, uh, I see. Yeah, and uh, I mean, the risks do get higher with age and stuff. I have high cholesterol, so I don't know. So the more, like I'm not um, in any of these super high risk categories, but I think the higher the risk, uh, the more you should be sort of um, wary. Uh, 
unless your risk of COVID is much higher than uh, like risk of dying from COVID, if that's much higher than all your other risks, then you should like run to the front of the line as soon as you can. But if your uh, uh, other risks are higher, but your COVID risk is low, then yeah, there's like a trade-off curve there, right? Of yeah. The more you know, safer you'll be. Like, we'll see. But I want all the politicians to take it as soon as possible and say so in public. That's yeah, I thought they were. I, I was talking to a friend of mine who was like complaining that politicians are going to get it first, of course. And I was like, I don't, is that bad? I yeah, uh, that's the weird thing, right? Like there's that weird mixed response. Like for some people, it's surprising. Like it should be like politicians should step up first yeah. to like take the risk and signal to others. But other people are like so convinced already that they're like impatient and say politicians should wait and other people should get it first. So it's kind of weird. But, uh, Anyway, so initial condition. So we will revisit all this in the J episode with Jubilee and, and Jubilee. whatever else we think of for J. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. All right. Uh, happy holidays and happy new year. Yeah, happy uh, holidays. It'll already be new year. <laughs> until, yeah, until, until next week. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. Scorpio Season is proud to be sponsored by uh, Smoke and Screws, the premium filter for your glass pipes, water pipes, and one hitters. Check out their next generation screen technology at smokeandscrews.com. Uh, we're also proud to be sponsored by Art of the Gig, a subscriber only newsletter for freelancers and independent consultants. Learn more about how to take your consulting practice to the next level at artofgig.com. Uh, great. Um, and if you liked our show, don't forget to like and subscribe.